Namaste. Welcome to Third Age Yoga. I'm Andy Gillis and I'll be your teacher today. Yoga is an ageless wellness practice that can be done by almost anyone, no matter your age, no matter your physical challenges. If you've maybe done yoga in the past and want to reconnect, if you've never tried yoga, Third Age Yoga offers a safe, comfortable way to just try yoga out and see how it feels. My job as your teacher is to keep you safe, to help you feel comfortable, and to help you enjoy the many benefits of yoga, including better posture and better balance, greater flexibility, greater strength. These things are so important to us as we grow older to stay mobile, independent. Yoga also helps us relieve stress and anxiety and it helps us relax more fully. So yoga can help us feel our best each and every day, no matter what kind of medical conditions we're living with. Third age yoga, what we will be doing today, is a journey through your comfort zone. So it should never hurt. You should never feel discomfort. But what I hope you will feel are some healthy stretches and strengthening that you know, you can tell by the way they feel that they're doing you some good, but they feel good when you're doing them. Yoga is meant to be done barefoot. So if you are able, I want to invite you to take your shoes and socks off before we begin. Get your feet into the act. Our feet are an important part of our yoga practice. What do you need? Well, I'm going to invite you to have handy a chair without arms. So whether that's a folding chair, kitchen chair, dining room chair, you can see I have a very basic chair here beside me. And a sticky yoga mat. Yoga mats are sticky, and why is that? So that we can stay grounded, our feet and hands stick to them. So yoga mats are available around town for maybe about $10. If you don't have a mat today or can't get a mat, then I'm going to invite you to do all of our yoga poses seated, except the standing ones, and just do those. Stand up, do them on your floor, your carpet, wherever you happen to be. Let us begin. And where do we start? By finding our tallest, healthiest posture. In yoga, this is called mountain pose. We're growing like a tall mountain. So I'm going to invite you to stand with your feet about hip width apart. So what does that mean? These are our two big hip bones right here. You may not be able to feel them, but they are there. So if I drew a line down my legs, my feet would be in about the middle. And notice I've got the outsides of my feet parallel to each other. So not this and not this, but facing straight ahead. That's how Mother Nature meant for us to stand as we stack our bones in their healthiest alignment. So stacking our knees over our ankles, lifting our thighs, stacking our hips over our knees. And now I'm going to invite you to very gently bring the tops of your thighs just slightly back. And you notice when you do that, the very bottom of your belly just lifts a little. You get a little taller. And this natural curve in your spine takes its natural place. Let us grow long through our side body, lifting your chest. And I'm going to invite you to bring the top of your breastbone back just a little bit. So this is our breastbone. It's a rectangle. Just bringing the top back a little bit. And as you do that, bringing the bottoms of your shoulder blades in toward your body. Let me show you what that looks like from the side. So just gently back as this comes forward. Small movement. You notice when you do this, your shoulders come back, your chest opens up, and guess what? You can breathe. This is not so hot for our breathing. This is better. 
stacking your ears over your shoulders and looking out at the world. This is not so hot. This is how Mother Nature meant us to be. Let us begin to move a little, warming our muscles, loosening our joints, bringing our arms overhead, gently swaying to the right, back to center, gently swaying to the left, back to center, swaying to the right. You don't have to go very far. Back to center, swaying to the left, feeling a stretch on the right side of your body. Back to center, let's interlace our fingers and slowly bring your hands to rest on the top of your head. Take a breath. Let's inhale, bring our arms overhead. Exhale, gently lower our hands to rest on our head. Once more, inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, resting your hands on your head. Let's inhale once more. And this time, bring your hands to the back of your head and let the back of your head rest in your hands. You can feel a nice opening in the front of your chest near your shoulders. Let's bring our elbows forward. Nice stretch in the back and back and out and elbows forward and back and out. Once more, elbows forward, back and out. Let's bring our hands overhead and straight out at shoulder level. Let's wiggle our fingers. We can hum a little tune, la la la, rotating our wrists a few times one way, a few times the other way. You be the judge. And now let's rotate our entire arm back, like so, and forward. We're opening our shoulder joints. And once more back and forward. Let's face our palms to the sky. Bring our arms overhead. Touch our palms together down to our breastbone. This is our namaste pose. And relax. Let us come to sit in our chair for a moment, if you are sitting. And if you are using a mat, let me give you a word of caution. Coming to the mat requires you to get down to the ground and back up again. And for most people, it's much easier to get down to the ground than it is to get back up again. So if you feel any hesitation, about whether you could get back up if you went down to the ground, please keep yourself safe and use the chair. The benefits are equal. So if you're using a chair, please take a seat. And then I am, if you are coming down to the mat, I'm going to show you a safe and comfortable way to come down to the mat using your chair as a helper. So I'm facing my chair here. And I'm probably about a foot in front of my chair. And I'm going to bend my knees and fold from my hip creases like so. So what do I not want to do? I don't want to do this. Owie, it hurts my low back. My shoulders are slumped. My head is a 12-pound bowling ball, and my poor neck is trying to hold it up. <sighs> but if I fold from my hip creases, everything stays comfortable and notice that my back is nice and long and straight. So here I go. I'm going to fold from my hip creases as I bend my knees, and I'm going to find the seat of the chair. And I'm going to use that for support. I'm going to bring my right toes back, bring my right knee down to the ground, bring my left knee down beside it, and now I can find my hands and knees and I'm going to just rotate to face you, but you can stay right where you are. And I'm going to invite you now to walk your knees to the right. 
Come to rest on the outside of your left thigh and just gently swing your legs around to the left. And come to sit with your legs straight in front of you. Nice and tall, just like we did when we stood up our mountain pose. If you'd like to have some support for your back, just use your hands to support you. If you are seated in a chair, I'm going to just invite you to take a look at your feet. And we're going to get our feet into the act now by doing some wonderful warming of our muscles and joints in our feet. So let's wiggle our toes, just like when we wiggle our fingers. If you hear a little bit of snap, crackle, and pop, don't worry about it. Curling your toes, flexing your toes, curling, flexing. It's kind of fun, isn't it? And rotating your ankles. A few times one way and a few times the other. Let's point our toes strongly away from us, all the way out away from us. And do you feel that nice stretch in the tops of your feet? I do. Let's point our heels way away from us and our toes toward us. And I think I know what you might be feeling, a nice stretch in the back of your calf. Let's bring the soles of our feet a little closer to each other, a little further away, a little closer. How close you get does not matter. It's the movement that counts. And here we go. So whether you are seated in your chair or seated on your mat, we're now going to rise and we're going to do a flow of standing poses. For those on the mat, we are going to retrace our journey to come up from a seat to a standing position on the mat. So please move slowly and gently along with me. To begin that journey, I'm just going to bend my knees and bring both my feet off to the left, just like this. Notice that I'm supporting myself with my right palm over here. And now I'm just going to swing my left palm around and now I can come up to my knees. Well, I'm a little off kilter. So I'm going to walk my knees to my right until I find my hands and knees. And then I'm going to walk my knees forward until once again, just as I did when I came down, I can find my chair. I'm going to put my left foot closer to the chair, come to my right toes, lifting through my toes, bringing my right foot next to my left. Here I am bent and slowly, slowly, I'm going to stand up. Whenever you rise from the floor or from a chair, do it slowly. That gives your blood pressure a chance to equalize and you won't get lightheaded. Now, today we are going to do some side bending poses and they are meant and they are wide legged poses. So we're going to be stretching our inner thighs and our inner groin muscles and joints, very important. And we're also going to be opening our hips. So we're going to be elongating the sides of our body. And I think that you'll find it's a wonderful feeling. So let me invite you to widen your feet. How far you go is completely up to you. It's not how far you go in yoga. It's how you go. You want to be comfortable. Think about how it feels. And I want to invite you to turn your toes inward a little bit. So remember, not this, not this, but just toes a little bit in. Why do we do that? We're nice and stable. And it takes the weight of our body to the outsides of our legs and that makes us grounded and balanced. I've got my hands on my waist. I'm nice and upright. And now I'm just going to turn my left foot out 90 degrees like so. So I've got one foot going that way, one foot out that way. And I'm going to bend my left knee. Go ahead, bend your left knee, stack it over your left ankle we are going to find yoga warrior two pose. There are three warrior poses in yoga, and of course, guess what they're called? Warrior one, warrior two, 
and Warrior 3. But why start with Warrior 1 when we can start with Warrior 2? So that's where we're starting today. So left knee stacked over the left ankle. Take a breath. As you're ready, bring your arms straight out at shoulder level, just like we did before. Take a breath, and now turn your head to the left and take a look out over your left arm. And breathe. Yoga warrior two, feeling strong. Let's bring our head back to center, and with your arms straight out at shoulder level, go ahead straighten your left knee and I'm going to invite you now to just shift your hips a little bit to the right. See? Just a small movement. And now gently bending to the left. This is yoga triangle pose. Take a breath. Coming back to center and rising. Returning your hands to your waist. Let's go ahead Turn our left toes in a little, and now we're going to do a wide leg forward fold. Remember the part about folding from our hip creases? We are going to fold like an envelope. So with your hands on your waist, and maybe you'd even like to bring the outsides of your hands to your hip creases. Folding forward, nice straight long back. You notice I'm not going very far. How far you go is not important. I know you can feel a stretch in the back of your legs. Take a breath and rise. Let us do the other side. Bring your right foot out 90 degrees. Stacking your left knee over your right knee, excuse me, your right knee over your right ankle. Let us bend our right knee Stacking it, we are finding now our Yoga Warrior Two. As you're ready, bring your arms straight out at shoulder level. Think about grounding both your feet into your carpet or floor or mat. Turning our head to the right, having a look out over your right arm, Yoga Warrior Two. You notice a little bit of a balance challenge it's a healthy challenge. Let's return our head to center. And with our arms straight out, straighten your right knee. Shift your hips a little to the left. And gently bend to your right. Yoga triangle pose. Again, how far you go, take that journey through your comfort zone. Maybe it's this far, maybe it's a little further. No need to go to extremes. Find comfort and steadiness. And rise. Bring your hands back to your waist. Let's bring our right toes in. Once again, let us do our wide-legged forward fold. Let us fold like an envelope from our hip creases. Don't go too far. Let the backs of your legs stretch. It shouldn't hurt and rise. Let's bring our feet back to hip width apart, palms to our breastbone. Namaste. That is our side bending flow of yoga poses. I am going to invite you now to have a seat in your chair or if you are coming down to the mat we are going to come now for the final time of our practice today. And we will come all the way down, if you are on the mat, to lie on your back. If you are sitting in your chair, I want to invite you to just nestle right into that chair and get comfortable. So here we go. If you are coming to the mat, folding from your hip creases, bending your knees, finding that chair and using it to support you, bringing your right foot back, coming to your right toes, Bring your right knee down to the ground, left knee down beside it. I'll give you a chance to get there. Bringing your palms down to the ground, walking your knees to the right, 
coming to rest on the outside of your left thigh and now gently swing your legs around like so. It takes a few times of doing it to feel comfortable. Go slowly. If something doesn't feel right, just retrace and come back up or ease out. So now we're going to come to our back. So I'm going to invite you, if you are to be the long way on your mat, with your feet close to the edge of your mat so that you have enough room for your whole body. So walking your palms back, easing until your elbows reach the mat, bringing your head down to the mat. You don't need to look at me right now. Letting your feet and hands splay out. Closing your eyes. And just taking some breaths. Whatever your natural breath is, just breathing. This is our relaxation time. Nothing to do, nothing to worry about. Just breathe. Just closing your eyes and breathing is very, very relaxing. Let's relax all our muscles from the tips of our toes, up through our ankles, relaxing your knees. If you have any discomfort in your knee joints, let it loosen. Letting your thighs get heavy, sinking your legs into your chair, let your buttocks get heavy. Let it sink down into the mat, down into your chair, getting more and more comfortable. Relaxing your chest, enjoying your breath. Relaxing your arms from the tips of your fingers up through your elbows all the way to your shoulders. Relaxing your neck. Letting all the muscles in your back get soft and loose. Relaxing your face, your jaw, letting your eyelids get soft and heavy, and letting your forehead smooth out, emptying your mind, nothing to worry about, nothing to react to just completely relaxing. We will relax for just a few seconds in silence, and then I'll ring the bells twice. Beginning to wiggle your fingers and toes, opening your eyes, 
If you are lying on your back, bending your knees, rolling to your right, bringing your left arm across your body, pressing yourself up to a seat with your left palm. Let's bring our palms to touch. Come to our breastbone. Thank you so much for joining me for Third Age Yoga today. May the light in you shine in me. May the light in me shine in you.